Hello, McFluffy52 here, back with some more Phyrexia All Will Be One content, and today we're playing a deck I call Smalls. I was kind of getting fed up with uh, the toxic decks running around, so I decided to make the most obnoxious one I could to try and show people up, and uh, we'll see if it actually works. We're playing Zero Rares. Zero Rare Toxic in mythic rank let's see if we can do some climbing there'll be a full deck tech at the end of the video so stick around if you're interested in that and um yeah let's see how we do also consider subscribing if you're interested in more Frexy all will be one videos uh because i i plan to record another video after this that i'll try and post today as well so we're 91 percent mythic i don't know how well this deck will work depending on how much interaction the opponent has i played a few games of it and then i was like you know what just to be like i feel like toxic i've i thought it was interesting at the beginning of the set and now it just irritates me because it's so so cheesy it feels like sometimes um this is a pretty good hand if we could actually find a black source i have no dual lands in this deck um not even like tap one so that might be a little bit troll um, so there is probably room for improvement for this deck, and you could probably play some actual like rare level interaction uh, and rare level lands to make this better. But I figured I know there are some people who are playing the game on the budget, and let's see if we can make a very silly budget deck work. We're gonna keep this hand. We do got these two really white, strong white toxic sources for into soldiers. <laughs> okay. Would have been really nice to have a black source here so we can get these flying toxic one creatures in. These car this card is really good, and this card is really good. Double strike with toxic one, so it essentially has toxic two. If you can get a necrogen com uh, communion on this card, you can get six toxic onto the opponent, like turn three, and then if they don't have anything on board, then they also get another six toxic the next turn, and the opponent loses. So that that is the like ideal turn four win i got that the last game i was playing and i was like you know what we'll just uh we'll record a video on this but our opponent playing soldiers with i guess a fair amount of interaction or they got lucky to have their lay down arms in hand we have a fair amount of interaction here we got the whisper of the dross we have the other minus four minus four sorcery spell that also has proliferate um this hand is looking pretty bad considering we did not draw into any swamps. Or roughly an even split. I think we have a few more swamps than we do have planes. We have 20 lands, I think it is. Uh, because we're playing all one drops and two drops. Um, but yeah, I try to sort out the creatures there into... Or the, uh, the cards into creatures and interaction. So we have a few interaction spells on one. Or with these Whisper of the Dross. Get minus one, minus one, proliferate. And then we have the minus four, minus four proliferate. And then we have ossification because ossification is just so good. Because um, it also works against planeswalkers. Our opponent here roping at the site of the jawbone duelist. Double strike is quite nutty. First strike two. I saw a, a comment of somebody on somewhere where they were talking about like first strike into Frexine Obliterator. You definitely have to worry about that because if you're playing like something with first strike and you have Frexian Obliterator, the Obliterator trigger will go off before the rest of your creatures are able to do damage. Uh, assuming that they block the creature with first strike. Potent here. Uh, not interested in playing magic, I guess. Fair enough. Well, our deck isn't interested in playing magic either because it's going to give us all of our uh, black cards while giving us all of our planes. Too bad they actually had an exile removal for this card because this card's pretty good because when it dies it creates a might. Pony here just straight up AFK. That is unfortunate. Well, maybe we'll get a win. That'd be nice. <laughs> nope, they're not AFK anymore. They found their second laydown arms. That's interesting. But yeah, I ended up hitting Mythic with the uh, the one deck that I sh like did a video on, the, the Grease Fire deck, where it's a gruel, a very aggro gruel. 
All right, well, go ahead and pass the turn because it's not like we're going to be playing anything, and I think we're just going to lose at this point. The Shuffler do do this to you sometimes. I should have mulliganed, but I was like, you know what, what's the chances of us drawing into all of our black cards and zero swamps, and instead zero like white cards? Apparently the chance is high enough where it happens. Potent here still struggling to figure out what to do with one card in hand. Going to pause on their second main phase. It's uh, your go. You have your Guardian of New Banalia that's probably holding up your Pryo. They may have not realized that. Or they're trying to figure out whether or not they want to play out another creature because they're afraid of a board wipe. Well, I can tell you, I'm not sure of how many Toxic decks are running a board wipe on four. Uh, I might be wrong, but it seems like it would go against the idea of Toxic, which is generally going to be aggro. <clears throat> Our opponent should go ahead and finish this out here. Oh, not quite. There we go, a white spell. Nice. Uh, go ahead and just concede, because opponent seems to like holding up Pryo at every turn of the game, and it's not like we're going to be winning. All we would have done is pass the turn to them and let them swing in, but it seems like they're going to take their time doing that, so... But yeah, I called this deck Smalls because we're just playing a bunch of these really small creatures that apparently are all like 2-2s two because Toxic is the same thing as doing 2 damage, basically. Uh, it's actually worse because you can't heal it, right? So like anything with Toxic 1 on it is essentially a 2-2. Two -two. Alright, this is a good hand. This is a playable hand. Our opponent gets to go first though, so if they bolt our Bilious Skull Dweller, that would be, that'd be sad. Bilious dweller because we'd like to cast these complete devotions that draw cards and give it plus two plus two <clears throat> though we might cast necrogen communion on it uh next this card gives your creature toxic two so it would have a total of toxic three and then when it dies uh you can return it to the battlefield under your control Ooh, that's nice Okay, maybe they cast a little remove on this. We play down the Jawbone Duelist. We give it Necrogen Communion, and then we can also complete Devotion it, and it's double strike. So giving it plus two, plus two is like hitting in for six damage, while also hitting in for six Toxic. <laughs> Are our opponent going to fail to develop the board? They did not fail to develop the board, unfortunately. All right, well, we're going to go ahead and swing in here, I think. Wait, we'll play this. Because then we can complete Devotion if they go to Chump Block. They're probably going to Chump. I would be surprised if they didn't Chump. If they don't Chump, they're playing an Enchantments. Or, yeah, like an Enchantments Count Matters deck. They're playing like Machiko's Reign of Truth in hand. Or they have like Hollowed Haunting. I don't even know if it would be worth keeping it up for Hollowed Haunting. Because he just gave us a Poison Counter so we can proliferate on that. You want to, if you can, prevent the first Poison Counter. Because then your proliferate cards actually do something. Or the opponent's proliferate cards. Jukai Naturalist. Bang a Shigeki. Alright, we'll go ahead. Play down another land here. What do we do? I guess we could do Necrogen Communion on the Jawbone Duelist. I think that might be the move. Problem though there is that they could block it and then it dies so maybe we play this pestilent siphoner and then put the necrogen communion on that we'll go ahead and attack here because since we do have two combat tricks see what our opponent wants to do if they don't want to do anything we'll play this they're only going to block that that's an interesting option so we could pump it to keep it alive we get two Toxic in here, or we could punch in for a bunch of damage with a complete Devotion. Um, hmm. We'll keep it on board, because we need as many creatures on board as possible, I think. It's likely that they'll try and remove, remove our creatures. Let me know if you guys have seen any crazy good Toxic decks. We're going to get rid of the Jawbone Duelist. Fair enough, we can play this Petulant Siphoner out there. 
And without too much worry, yep, there's Machiko's Reign of Truth. I knew exactly what you were playing opponent. I read you like a book. Not really, but... Alright, um... I think we just go ahead and attack. Bang a Shigeki, fair enough. Uh, maybe we shouldn't have attacked here because now uh, we have to worry about this Juke and I Naturalist swinging back in. So we could just play this and hold up a pump spell for it, but they're going to give it plus three, plus three because of this Machiko's Reign of Truth, so we can't ever block it. So maybe we just full commit to the Pestilent Siphoner, but if they have another Borrowed Time, which, you know, what is the chance that the Enchantment deck has all the correct answers? Probably pretty high. Um, I'm trying to think of what's the best move here. Well, we can play this Pestilent Siphoner and then play the Bite Light Belly Rat. Because this, when it dies, it proliferates. And then we can play the Necrogen Communion on the Siphoner if it survives. I have to say, I do love the art for the Siphoner. I kind of want to click on it, but I'm afraid the opponent's going to target it. That's like one of my least favorite things about Arena is that if you hover something, um, if you hover something, you uh, it like reveals what you <laughs> what you hover. But yeah, I really do like the art for this. Too bad it's like a pretty simple, uh, common how the card is. Ooh. Ossification is pretty nice here. The problem is if they have a response somewhere along the line here, we might be uh, in a bad spot. I will play this. That's like toxic three in the air. We can play Ossification to eat up their Jukai Naturalist, or we play this Crawling Chorus. I think we'll go ahead and attack in first. That's three poison, so they're dead next turn if they don't have an answer. Um, what is the best option here? Yeah, you, one thing I would say is maybe a better idea would play a few protection spells in this deck. Uh, let's see. Crawling Chorus seems like a nice because it can block. And then it provides us another toxic creature, like a backup creature, if they get rid of ours. I don't think they're going to have any damage spells, so this complete devotion is not entirely that important. Um, because the main thing that's in here for is, well, the pump can help you kill creatures in combat. And then the draw card, though, helps you keep finding hits. And then we're playing only 20 lands in this deck because we're very low curve and we need, need to keep finding hits. Our opponent doesn't have an answer. Do they not have an answer? No way they don't have an answer. Like, opponent, yeah, you're at 30 life, but yep. Zero rares takes down mythic enchantments. <laughs> we did lose that first game. But you can see that this deck has an okay win rate so far. It's it's not a large sample size, or it's not even really a sample size, but... I've seen, I've played against this deck, I've been got by this deck. It's, it's a decent aggro deck. Um, but with any aggro deck, if the opponent has the responses to it, and you can't draw well, um, or if like, um, yeah, if you if you can't draw well, or the opponent has a bunch of responses, or if you don't kill the opponent fast enough, you're you're gonna lose. It is just what it is. We got some nice removal spells here. Venerated Rock Priest. Uh, do we just I think we just attack in no. Uh, they probably are playing bounce spells, if anything. Problem is they're playing this Rot Priest. Do we get rid of the Rot Priest? Alright, we'll just do this. See if they want to block. No. Alright, and then we can go ahead and drown an Icker. The number one thing with Rot Priest, they don't have any protection here, so it's okay to do this. I think, for the most part. The opponent does not have any protection. This prevents them from using the green march on it. Or using a protection spell. Though they might be playing Slesnia Toxic and that yeah, they're playing Bant Toxic. Or Bant Proliferate, so they're they're uh it's less of a problem for them. 
All right, Necrogen Communion means we get as much Toxic in there as possible, as fast as possible. There we go, five Toxic. We got our opponent down to half health, turn three. Can we kill them? Oh, GG. It's GG. It's GG. Whisper of the Dross. He gets minus one, minus one. They get proliferated. We swing in for four more. And it's game. I'm telling you, Toxic is so stupid. <laughs> uh, Did we go down in Mythic? That's funny. We won, but we went down. I don't know what the percentage is. Is it... So it's to be like the percentage decreases, so you're in like the top 10% or whatever, or something like that, or is it, I don't, I don't know. Uh, but yeah. I was so happy to find out though, after I got Mythic, that like, I didn't realize this. This, this, this is going to sound pretty dumb, but I did not realize that once you get a rank, you can't fall out of it. So like, as soon as you hit Diamond, you can't fall back into Plat. Um, but you can go from like diamond one to diamond two or like uh, from plat one to plat two. You can't though work back like whole ranks. Um, all right, this hand is questionable. Our opponent goes first. Uh, we'll head and give it a try. But yeah, you can see how uh, these proliferate cards are gross and you can see how these toxic cards are pretty gross. We have ossification for their farm hand. Means we get to go in, go ham on them. Fortunately, we they're playing big white, so they have a ton. Like I'm talking, their deck is really strong. I think it's the number one deck in best of three, and it's not a weak deck in best of one. Restoration of Iconjo. Please don't ossify our creature. Uh, do we want to play this complete devotion while we have a creature? Um, perhaps. Though, if they get rid of this creature, we need another creature to keep swinging in with. So I'm going to go ahead and play this. I could play that in my second main phase, but it doesn't really matter. Two poison. So we got them down to 16 HP. <laughs> We've done four damage in normal, normal terms. Oh, they just ramp. No ossification. No ossification. You can drown an ink or whatever they play, assuming it's a creature. That gets us up to three counters, and we hit in for five, uh, up to five. No, oh, they had to depopulate. That is going to be a problem. Now that our complete devotion is completely horrible. <laughs> Uh, well, we can try and rely on our responses here. But yeah, you can see how, like I said, this deck is good in situations where uh, the opponent doesn't have responses. So if they didn't have a turn 4 sweeper, turn 4 or turn 5 sweeper, we would have had a better time. Elspeth, we don't have any good answers to Elspeth. I think we're, we've lost this one. Unfortunately, it is what it is. Resolve. Let's go Whisper the Dross on that. Yep. And then we can play Drown and Icker on the Architect. So we have them down to half health. But I don't think we're going to be able to get any further. Because our opponent has basically any response, or they can block any creature they want with Elspeth, because they can give flying. Put a plus one counter on, or choose a, uh, choose up to one target creature. Put a plus one, plus one counter, and a counter from among flying, first strike, lifelink, or vigilance on it. And they have the eternal wanderer, so we're looking extra dead. We're going to be taking quite the amount of damage here. We got them down to six. Or got them up to six, so we just need four more proliferates, or four more poison. But our opponent is probably going to give this creature like life link. Well, not life link. They'll probably give it flying before they give it life link. I don't really know. Oh, we are taking ten damage this turn. <laughs> plus one, plus one. Give it another plus one, plus one. 
Yeah. Sweepers and Planeswalkers do real good. And then you want to know what does real good into Planeswalkers? Invoke Despair. <laughs> we'll go ahead. Oh, wait, this is only a creature we control, so we can't even pump their creatures. <clears throat> I was about to say, did we not die there? I've been shocked. They are a fair amount of decks, so we went down in percentage. So maybe that makes me think that, like... I don't know. That does make me wonder. I'm always confused with, like, percentiles and stuff. Is it supposed to be, like... Top 1% as in, like the best or you talk like 99% as in you're better than 99% that sort of thing all right we'll play the crawling quarry out here first maybe because if they kill it we get another one ooh burn can we beat burn we're pretty fast this Jawbone Duelist, we go ahead and play it out, dies. Uh, I don't think we really have an option, though, right? Maybe we just play the Billis, Billis Skull Dweller. And then next turn, we can play the Duelist and a Whisper of the Dross. This way, the burn spell that they're probably casting this turn hits a Skull Dweller or something. Double Swiss here. Impressive. Uh, oh, if you want to just go back and forth, I'm down. I can do that. Uh, double Strike is nice. We have this instant speed minus one, which is cool. Because what we can do is we can block with the Jawboon Duelist and then give the opposing creature minus one. And that way, because they all have like two toughness. Yeah, they buff that stuff, that's fine. They're taking a bunch of damage, but the opponent's going to take a crap ton of damage on the swing crackback. Ooh, they really had the Kamano off the... Yeah, we are looking pretty rough around the edges, but hey. Pass the blockers. Blocker to damage. Yup, boom. Mm-hmm. Ah, this is not what we wanted to see. That is not what we wanted to see. Okay, uh we sing in if we swing in with everything, we take them up to eight, and then we can get up to nine with the whispers of the dross. So if we draw something with this complete devotion. If we draw another whisper of the dross with this complete devotion. We're in a good spot. Um, so maybe we put this complete devotion on like the Skull Dweller, the Crawling Chorus, swing in, see if we draw a Necrogen Communion, because if we draw that, we win. Uh, I think that's the plan here. And then we can hold the Jawbone Duelist back. Or we could hold, no, we hold the Crawling Chorus back. That makes much more sense. A land, that is not going to do it. So we're going to hold back. I don't know if this is really enough to stop us, or stop the pain that we're about to receive, but we'll go with this. But we should have probably held back the Skull Dweller? I don't know. Alright, well, end turn. Not a big fan of our odds here. You get another plus one counter on whatever they play. That's going to act as a blocker because it doesn't have haste. Do they have... Ooh, Kamano. Okay. Do we still have them? Okay, resolve. I think we have them. They don't have the damage. How are we going to beat Mono Red? I mean, we could block here if we wanted to be extra, like, crazy. Um, no balls, no blocks. My turn. 
Ooh, that's just even funnier. Eat this, Mono Red. Doink. Good game. We beat Mono Red. Zero rares. I mean, Mono Red's not really that many rares, is it, either? But damn. Now the net percent went up. I don't, I don't know how this percent thing works. I'm very confused. If you if you do know, please let me know in the comments. It'd be greatly appreciated. Right, let's see. We'll play like two, three more games. I th I think to see, give a full test run of this deck in Mythic. If it does well in Mythic, you might be able to use it to climb the ladder. Or if it does all right in Mythic, I wouldn't call this doing doing well. We're at a skeptical 50% win rate. All right, this is playable, I think. What is our opponent playing? Are they playing Big White? Because if they're playing Big White, I'm going to be very big sad. No, we have Whisper of the Trolls. <sighs> Exile effects. Yikes. That is upsetting. I don't like the fact that it exiles. White is so strong right now. Ah. <laughs> Alright, well, there goes all our creatures. We'll probably not top deck a creature. Opponent had like... The thing is, it exiles, so it didn't even matter if we had like one and then played Necrogen. Like, if it, this didn't exile... Well, I guess if they didn't have removal in one, we could have played this on that creature so that if it died, but no, they just have all exiling effects. It's very annoying. Alright, well, let's see if we can do anything this game. Okay. We have zero poison counters on them, which is a real big problem because, well, these counter these cards are nice. They don't do anything if they have zero poison counters. Ah, that's game. Actually, we can do this in response. They won't concede quite yet. Oh, whoops. <laughs> Thought they were going to plus on it. How kind of you. Yeah, we did not get the aggro play, so I don't think there's a chance that we win this at all, but... Can you pick a little faster opponent? Looking at the top seven cards of the library and picking a permanent that card with mana value three or less. Like Anjou. Believe it or not, Lorna the Third Path is one of the most played cards in Standard. Probably, like, best of three Standard more so than... Uh... Best of one. Because best of three is a little bit less aggro favored. As far as I understand. So you get more grindy decks and you get more decks where... Um... Be brave. You can still kill it. Funny enough, we can still... <laughs> Alright, that's it. We're just gonna go, go out in a blaze of glory. Do this, we'll proliferate that, we'll proliferate that, yep, here. Get yourself a saga. That one must go though. That's the only thing that's... <clears throat> Can we make it? So we have a 50% win rate at the moment. Play two more and see what how it shapes up. I think there's I don't know if there's that many like rares that you could add to this deck to make it better. I mean, obviously Scrub's Hive is an absolute powerhouse, so maybe you put Scrub's Hive in here. Um and that's a rare. You could put maybe like Scrub himself or itself, and then uh see how 
that helps. Uh, we got a decent slew of creatures here. Now the question is, are they going to remove them all? That's one reason the crawling course is so nice, is because even if you remove it, you need two removals. It's good against sweepers. All right, let's get this damn poison counter on their face. Uh, and then we'll play Jawbone Duelist, because if we can get that in there as soon as possible, we can get a bunch of poison counters. We have Ossification, Drown, and Icker for whatever they play. They play nothing. Alright, are they going to be playing a Sweeper on 3? If they have Brotherhood's End, we'd be, we'd be very sad. So maybe we hold back here. We go in for the attacks. We do Complete Devotion on Jawbone Duelist and see what happens. I'm willing to bet they have a Sweeper on 3. Brotherhood's End. That's just a normal... Tap land, or one of the tap lands from New Capenna. Our opponent, not a huge fan of the poison that's coming at them, and they concede. Okay, that was a really short one. Maybe we'll play two more. Alright, let's see, let's see. What do you guys think of Toxic? I, I was initially like, oh, it's cool. I like, wow, like, what Rot Priest is kind of funny, and then like, but it just feels like every Rot Priest, maybe it's just like, you know, selective remembering, right? But every Rot Priest deck feels like they have two Rot Priests. It's not even one Rot Priest. It's like, okay, one Rot Priest, whatever. But no, it's they have two Rot Priest. You, you, uh, they play out a Rot Priest turn one, they play out another Rot Priest turn two, and it's like, what, what am I supposed to do into this? They have like a perfect setup for like a turn four, turn three win. Alright, this is a better hand. Question is, do we want the ossification or the complete devotion? That's a good question. We want to keep all the creatures because opponents like to kill creatures, and creatures are kind of vital to the whole plan. Um, considering we're aggro, maybe we keep the ossification to remove early threats. If they're playing, they're playing. They have multicolored sleeves, so they're probably playing exile removal. So these crawling forces are maybe a little less relevant. Uh, I don't know. Let's hope that they're just slow and we'll play complete diffusion. If they have cut down turn one, that'd be funny. Nice reason to play out the crawling course. Cut down turn one. They are playing black. Are they playing mono black? Wall sleeper. Ooh. Okay. Next up. Back in. Are you going to lock? Okay. Um. I'm not a big fan of playing out Job and Duelist here, actually. Okay, we'll play Billis Skull Dweller so that they have. We want to hold off until we see one removal spell get thrown, I think. Because this card is just so good. If you can get it through, especially with a pump spell, right? There you go, there's the cut down. Alright, now we have double jawbone duelist, we can go ahead and go ham. So, will our opponent have a sweeper of any sort? They make it a 2 2. Blowing up this uh, evolved sleeper with complete devotion, though, is definitely worth it. Fight spell, or er, combat tricks can be so good in the right right situations but they're hard to play around and in some situations they're just terrible but when you're playing so aggro it doesn't feel too bad get an ossification here going if we can draw into another card worth discarding oh yilly. okay i feel bad about discarding a jawbone duelist but i don't really like the fact that they have a creature here because this is a ward discard a card Yep, Jawbone Duelist, by. Get as much mileage out of these crawling choruses before they find something to get rid of them, like a Kix's Command. Phyrexian Obliterator. Now that is a bit of a problem, but I have just the, the trick for you. Get the hell out of here. Now, if they have an Invoke Despair this next turn, they get to get one of their creatures back, because we have to sacrifice an enchantment. Liliana, okay. That's not too bad. Happy to help, but yep. I'm taking the credit 
like when we win. Sacrifice a creature. That's fine by me. <clears throat> Alright, well, let's go ahead and swing in. Do we think they have a cut down? Do we think they have a cut down? Uh, okay, we could go all face, but then they make us discard a card, so we lose our Jawbone Duelist. But if we send one at Liliana and they have a cut down, we'll send the Crawling Chorus at their room. Because if they have a cut down and cut down the crawling forest, we get a creature back. They do not have a cut down. Uh, that makes things a lot easier. Alright, we should have a pretty nice lethal setup here. Assuming we get... Please no invoke. Graveyard Trespasser. I think we still have lethal, no? Ah, uh, no, we have the Jawbone Duelist. We need another removal spell. Shucks. Alright, um... I think we just go ahead and send it. Right? And hope they have no responses next turn as well. Boom. Up to 9 poison. Ooh, do we keep this in hand so if we draw a removal spell? Because we have to kill on board. But if they play out a creature, we don't have kill on board. What are the chances that they have shielded? Pretty high, right? So I guess we have to play this out. A sweeper? Uh... Geeks' command? Bank Buster? Bank Buster? It's not a move. Cut down? No, oh, even cut down doesn't save them. Dang! Okay. I think we'll wrap it up here in terms of this deck. I hope you guys enjoyed. We'll hop into a deck tech, so don't go quite yet if you're interested in the exact breakdown and reasoning behind the cards and maybe what we can change about this deck. So if you're a budget player, this is something that you could look into playing. Um, it's clearly a decent deck. Is it amazing? It, it's very linear. So if you, you're you not going to have like some crazy like late game plan, your plan is to get rid of the opponent before they can really develop their board. I do like the, the mix of removal we have here, the, jaw, the ossifications. We're definitely nice that last game. Um, draw, Whisper and Dross. Uh, Whisper of the Dross, also pretty good because we can use it at instant speeds, which can work as a nice combat trick with Jawbone Duelist. Um, Jawbone Duelist also being double strike is so good. This card is like goaded. Um, Drown and Icker. We didn't really get to see it pop off, but it's really nice against those thicker decks. Like think of like werewolves. If they play down like a werewolf, werewolves can have like two toughness or three toughness um in some cases i'm trying to think of like other really commonly played decks with reasonable toughness if you're looking at any like green decks maybe that's good um but instead of in turn in terms of the creatures i think these creatures are pretty good um i don't know if there's actually that many upgrades that i would honestly make uh besides perhaps like the land base um because you could put in a Ganjo, put in a Takanuma. These are just going to provide value if you ever draw them, right? You can just go ahead, boom. Uh, the problem is we are 20 lands we, and we're playing Ossification. So if we draw into a bunch of like non-basic lands, you might run into a problem. But you probably want to play your Caves of Koilos because we're here to just race. We don't really care too much about our life total total um shatter sanctum coming in tapped when you have like the first two lands and considering everything we play is so low cost probably not the move um and i would say the same case for like the other top lands. so maybe you put in iganjo takanuma and like a place of caves coilos but anyways in terms of everything um we got this for our one drop creatures we got crawling chorus as our one of our one but drops a choice. This card's really good um, because it got that extra like might on death trigger, right? Uh, so you can really keep the toxic train going. It's really annoying to play around. Um, I've played against this card and it it's annoying. Is it broken? No, not really, but it's it's definitely annoying. Uh, Billis Billis Skull Dweller is also a pretty annoying card because of its death touch. Uh, this can make it pretty good blocker or opponents just don't want to block it and if you can get that first poison counter in 
uh, this card becomes useful, and then like this card's proliferate becomes useful. This card's proliferate becomes useful. So, oops, didn't mean to move it around. Um, so yeah, that, that's what I would say is you want to get be able to get those first poison counters in. Um, so build a school dollar is really nice for that in that regard. Um, now for our two drop creatures, we, well we already talked about Whisper Dross. It's instant speed minus one minus one, so it's good for picking off small things. The proliferate. We need everything to just get us that extra bit of damage or like extra, extra bit of poison. So this is like a minus one, minus one, plus two damage, right? To proliferate. Each poison counter is like two damage. Um, Jawbone Duelist, huge. This deck, this card is huge in this deck. Um, so you kind of want to play around a removal if you can with this card. And then if you can slam Necrogen Communion on it, this card gives your creatures Toxic 2. Well, this becomes Toxic 3. It hits in there twice. The opponent gets six poison counters. So that's really cool. If you can get that to pull, pull that off, that is something worthy of recording. I'm very sad that I didn't catch that uh, on the game that I played pr prior to recording. Though I wasn't playing in ranked, so I don't know how much easier it is to pull off in ranked, but in the similar vein, we have Pestilent Siphoner. It's a flying 1-1 one, one with Toxic 1. Well, it's really nice. Flying things are hard to block. The opponent might not have a good way to deal with it. You throw in Toxic 2 to it. It's hitting him for three toxic in the air for like turn, like two turns. The opponent's probably gone at that point, right? Uh, so that's another reason why we're playing Necrogen Communion. Or the main reason we're playing Necrogen Communion is because the toxic two can really speed up the poison uh, in in like shocking ways. And then it's also nice because if the creature dies, you get to return it to the battlefield. So works well with uh, these cards as well because they're just so good on the field and then lastly blight belly rat this is nice because well it's a 2-2 so it can trade with some creatures more so than these other ones well i guess jawbone duelist with double strike can trade um but then if it dies you can also get the proliferate off uh which is really nice and then complete devotion this lets you uh you you want to be making sure that you try and play your cards on your second main phase and then you can play around this combat trick to hopefully get rid of the opponent's creatures while preserving your own so that you can keep the toxic train going if they don't have anything on board they're not going to be blocking and this card helps you uh, sort of enable that with the card draw and then also draws you cards so that you can keep the train going uh then echogen Communion. i feel like we already talked about it drown Icker. uh it's kind of annoying this card sorcery but it's a really strong removal it removes everything besides like shieldred um and if they have a shieldred, uh, hopefully you're able to sneak in enough poison counters where it doesn't really matter that it's on the board um, at that point. And then lastly, Auspication. One of the most played cards from the new set. It's really good removal uh, and kind of nice because I was kind of lazy, didn't look at any sort of rare lands, and it works well with the fact that we're playing all basics. Uh, but yeah, I would definitely try and switch out some of your lands, and that's about it. Hope you guys really enjoyed the deck. It was a lot of fun to play, actually. Um, well, it was it was fun to know that we're playing such a like very simple deck, and we're still winning with it, uh, which seems kind of silly to me. But um, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the deck. If you did, make sure to leave a like. Consider subscribing for more uh, content, and I will catch you guys all in the next video. Have a nice morning, evening, night, afternoon, whenever and wherever you're watching. Ciao.